Hey everyone, welcome back to another deep dive. Huh? And uh, today we're looking at something that's been getting a lot of buzz lately. Google's Notebook LM. Um, more specifically, the AI-powered audio overviews that it can create. Yeah. Have you had a chance to play around with it at all? I have, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. So for folks who haven't heard of it, basically you feed the AI your notes, articles, any research you've got really, and it kind of spits out a podcast mm -hmm. summarizing everything. It's like having this super organized AI buddy just like sifting through all the chaos. It is. And it's fascinating how people are reacting to it because there's this real mix of like awe and annoyance with these audio overviews. Right. On the one hand, the voices are incredibly realistic. Like, I'm sure you've seen some of the clips going viral. Oh, yeah. They're almost eerie how human-like they sound. It's kind of freaky. Yeah. Yeah. But then you actually listen to what it's saying and yeah. you're like, wait, is that it? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like technically impressive for sure. Yeah. But it often falls short in terms of actual insight. Like, I've even seen people online describing the AI voices as having this relentless enthusiasm. Mm. And I think that's a good way to put it. it. It is. It's like the AI is trying way too hard to convince you that the material is like groundbreaking. Yeah. You know, and it can really backfire. Totally. Because think about it. When someone's constantly over the top enthusiastic, it starts to feel inauthentic, even manipulative. Right. Like you're not buying it. Exactly. Yeah. Real engagement comes from like a genuine understanding of the material, not just artificial hype. Yeah. You need the substance to back it up. Right. So I guess that leads us to the big question here, right? Like, what is the disconnect between the impressive tech and then the kind of lackluster content? Right. What's going on there? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I see people complaining about a lot is factual errors. Like, the AI will just straight up state something that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I've even got a clip here where it totally butchers some basic facts about Mercury. Okay. Let's hear it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> oh, oh. Oof. Not even close. Mercury is tiny compared to Earth, and it spins pretty fast. So, yeah, not quite. Not quite. So this issue of accuracy seems to go deeper than just a few flubs here and there. Yeah. Like, I was reading about the study where researchers intentionally fed Notebook LM some bogus information about the solar system. Oh, really? Yeah. And get this. The AI often repeated those errors, even though it was technically capable of identifying them in other contexts. So it knew the info was wrong, but it still yeah. used it. Yeah. It's wild. Why would it do that? Well, I think it raises this really crucial question about how these AI models are actually prioritizing information. You know, huh. is it placing more emphasis on creating a smooth conversational flow, even if that means sacrificing accuracy? Interesting. If so, that has huge implications for trust and reliability. Yeah, because you're listening to this thing and it's like, okay, cool. But if it's just making stuff up, then what's the point? Right. It's like that friend who tells amazing stories, but, you know. They tend to embellish the truth a bit. Yeah. You enjoy the tale, but take it with a grain of salt. Exactly. So that's the challenge Notebook LM is facing right now. It's finding that balance between engaging storytelling and factual accuracy. Because let's be honest, yeah. who wants to listen to a podcast that's soupy entertaining, but full of misinformation? No one. Nobody wants that. Yeah. So, okay. Right. The novelty wears off pretty quick. Yeah. So factual errors aside... What are some of the other things that people have been pointing out as shortcomings? Well, there's the inconsistent audio quality. Sometimes you get these weird, repetitive background noises that are just super distracting. Oh, yeah. I've definitely noticed that. Oh, yeah. It's like listening to a podcast from inside a broken robot. And then there are the analogies. Oh, the analogies. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they're just bizarre, like comparing pizza to knitting. I've heard some pretty bad ones. It seems like the AI is trying to be clever, but just completely misses the mark. Right. And let's not forget the awkward use of filler words. Like it's like every other sentence has an um, or a like thrown in there. Yeah. It's almost painful how often it happens. Right. It's like the AI has picked up on the fact that humans use these filler words, but hasn't quite grasped the nuance of when and how to use them effectively. Right. It's like the AI equivalent of like a teenager trying to sound cool. Yeah. So instead of sounding natural, it just comes across as robotic and awkward. Okay, so we've got this laundry list of issues here. Mm. From factual errors and weird audio glitches to clunky analogies and the overuse of filler words. What does all this tell us about the current state of AI when it comes to creating like truly compelling podcast content? I think these shortcomings really highlight the limitations of current AI technology. You know, AI is incredible at mimicking patterns, but it struggles with nuanced context and genuine understanding. Right. All those things that are crucial for creating really engaging and insightful content. So it's really good at following the rules, 
but not so good at understanding why those rules exist in the first place. Exactly. It's like it can write a grammatically perfect sentence, but doesn't actually grasp the meaning behind the words. Exactly. Yeah. That's a critical distinction. And until AI can move beyond simply recognizing patterns and develop a deeper understanding of the why behind information, right. it's going to continue to produce content that feels a bit robotic and lacking in true depth. Yeah. And that brings us to a rather concerning concept that one of our sources calls the slop problem. The slop problem. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. We got to unpack the slop problem. So this slop problem, it refers to this potential flood of like low quality content that AI could unleash on the Internet. You know, yeah. it's not just about the sheer volume of content either, yeah. but the potential homogenization of creative output. Right. Because AI tends toward the statistically average, you know, it can uh -huh. be difficult for it to produce truly unique and compelling work. It's like if you took all the most popular podcasts right now, blended them together in a giant audio smoothie. Yeah. And what you got was just kind of bland and predictable. Exactly. And that's a valid concern. Yeah. Yeah. If AI-generated content becomes the norm, will we lose that spark of originality? That unique human voice that makes podcasts so engaging. It's a scary thought. But is all hope lost? Is AI doomed to just churn out this kind of mediocre content forever? I wouldn't say that, remember, this technology is still in its infancy. Right. There's a lot of potential for improvement, yep. especially as AI models become more sophisticated, more capable of handling nuance and context. So maybe instead of fearing AI as this like content slop monster, mm -hmm. we should be thinking about how we can guide its development in a more positive direction. Absolutely. And I think part of that involves recognizing that AI doesn't have to replace human creativity. You yeah. know, it can augment it. Yeah. Imagine AI as a tool that helps us unlock new creative possibilities rather than a replacement for human ingenuity. Like a super-powered brainstorming partner hmm. who can analyze mountains of data and help us see connections we might have missed. Exactly. And there are already some glimmers of hope in that direction. You know, we've seen examples of people using Notebook LM in really creative ways. Yeah. For example, one user found it helpful for breaking down complex philosophical texts, while another used it to create audio summaries of legal cases to share with classmates. So it's not all doom and gloom. There are some genuinely useful applications for this technology. Absolutely. Especially in fields like education and research. Absolutely. And think about those who might be uncomfortable with traditional recording methods. Right. Perhaps due to shyness or a disability, yeah. AI could provide them with a new way to share their knowledge and ideas with the world. That's a great point. It's all about finding the right tools for the right job. And AI could definitely have a place in the podcasting landscape. Yeah. Even if it's not the be-all and end-all solution, some people might think. Exactly. It's about finding that synergy between human creativity and AI capabilities. But to get there, we need to address some key roadblocks. But those we've already talked about, the factual errors, the weird audio glitches, all that. Those are certainly part of it. But there's also the challenge of teaching AI to move beyond simply recognizing patterns in data uh. and actually understand the meaning behind those patterns. Right? That sounds incredibly complex. How do you even begin to teach a machine what it means to understand something? It's a massive undertaking. It involves pushing the boundaries of fields like natural language processing and machine learning. Sure. But one promising avenue is to focus on developing AI models that can grasp the why behind information. So instead of just knowing that Mercury is a planet, it would understand the processes that led to its formation, its role in the solar system, its relationship to other celestial bodies. Exactly. That deeper level of understanding would allow AI to generate content that's not just factually accurate, but genuinely insightful and thought-provoking. But even if we manage to crack the code of AI understanding, there are still some big ethical questions lurking in the background. Absolutely. As AI becomes more adept at creating content, we need to have serious conversations about how to ensure that human artists and creators are fairly compensated and acknowledged. And what about copyright and intellectual property? If an AI generates a podcast that sounds just like Ira Glass, who owns the rights to that content? These are complex issues without easy answers. And as AI continues to evolve, we're going to have to grapple with these ethical challenges head on if we want to ensure that this technology is used in a way that benefits everyone. So while the current state of AI audio overviews might be a bit underwhelming, the future is full of possibilities, both exciting 